The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I'll tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds, the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest at the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our gospel this morning, you just heard the story about a well-to-do farmer who got the highest quality wheat seed he could find and had his hired hands planted in his fields. One night, soon afterward, while the hired hands were asleep, an enemy of the landowner went through the field scattering seeds of the toxic weed, a weed known as bearded darnel, or otherwise known as bastard wheat. Now, bearded darnel and wheat look almost exactly the same when they're young. But it's only when they mature that they can be seen to be different. Darnell, you see, doesn't grow as high as regular wheat, and their ears of grain look different. But unfortunately, by then, their roots have become intertwined. Well, before long, the foreman conceived that the fields had been polluted. So he came to his employer in in puzzlement and distress. He said, sir, I thought you gave us good seed for the planting. And the farmer said, yes, I did. What's wrong? And the foreman then described what was happening. And the farmer then realized that his field had been sabotaged. And he told his foreman what he thought. So the foreman asked, if he and his men should not begin pulling up the weeds. The landowner was a wise and a prudent, patient man. He said quietly, but he said decisively, no, no, no. No, if you start pulling up the weeds, you're going to be upping some of the wheat as well. What we're going to do is we're going to let the wheat and the weeds grow together until harvest time. And then we'll gather it all and we'll separate it, keeping the wheat and burning the weeds. Well, I tell you, can't we kind of identify with the foreman's confusion and distress upon discovering the weeds in the field? I mean, we all have what we consider to be weeds in our lives, don't we? And And the weeds around the world around us. For example, one Christian can look at the fragile field of, say, unborn life and is horrified at abortions that mar it and deplete it. Lord, They might ask, why do we allow those weeds to come here? But another Christian, no less earnest, 
looks at the women of the world who have struggled and struggled for their rights and their freedoms to make personal choices about their pregnancies and is horrified at the possibility that those hard-won rights just might be jeopardized by forces that seek to take them away. Lord, where did you let these weeds come from? And there are example after example after example. But in this parable of the weeds and the wheat, Jesus is trying to remind us of two things. That one, evil is always with us. And two, our faith journey never ends. Now, this is a parable about, about evil, okay? And evil is as old as creation itself. But in this parable, Jesus wants to provide us with words of hope. That in the end times, during the time of the great harvest, that God is the one who's going to handle the problem of evil. Jesus tells us that even though our, our impulse is to destroy the weeds, we're called to wait. That redemption is always possible through Jesus Christ. And through Christ, those weeds may very well become wheat. As the parable of, uh, illustrates, destroying the weeds could also affect the wheat. I mean, the root systems intertwined. And Jesus does not want to hurt the faithful. You see, Jesus makes it clear that it is God who will judge. It is not up to us. So you see, this isn't a parable about exclusion and, and selectivity. This is, this is a parable about inclusion and hope. The emphasis is not on judgment. The emphasis is on redemption. You know, the author M. Scott Peck once asked his little boy to try to define evil for him. What do you think evil means? And the little boy said, well, evil is live spelled backwards. Evil is live spelled backwards. And, you know, that's what it is, you know. Evil is the opposite of life. Evil is what destroys life life. When the Gospel of Matthew was being put together, the church at the time was struggling with many evils within it, life-destroying influences. You know, the, you know the kind of people that we're talking about here, the, the kind of people that tell you better, better not look at the silver lining around the cloud or you know, you're going to get struck by lightning. You know, the kind of people that the former Vice President Spiro Agnew once called the nattering nabobs of negativity. But Jesus does not answer the problem of evil through this parable. What he does do, though, is offer a word of hope and a word of caution that God will deal with it. Oh yeah, also there's a tendency or maybe a desire to believe at some point in our faith life that our, our journey in faith is kind of complete. That for some, you know, for some people thinking, I really should have said this last week during confirmation, that some people think the journey ends at confirmation. They keep, treat confirmation like a graduation from church. That they need to do no more in their relationship with Christ or his church. But we have to always remember that we are constantly growing. We're like wheat. We're constantly growing. There's no magical point that we can claim to have arrived. That throughout all of our lives, all along the way, all of us struggle with evil. And our faith journey is a lifelong process. In his letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul addressed a group of people who had, who had stopped growing in their faith because, hey, they're expecting the second coming of Christ to be there any day. And because of that, well, then let's not worry about our faith journey anymore. So the Apostle Paul told them and is at the same time telling us that we cannot expect Christ to come to us as much as that we should grow toward 
Christ every day. The key ingredient in this, you see, is to build a community, a community of faith, so that all may grow together in God's love. The community, the, the church, is the, is the experience of God's Spirit. And the Spirit guides us on our faith journey together. And that faith journey never ends. You know, once there was a pastor who was approached by a young man at the airport. And the young stranger said, well, okay, well, what do you do for a living? Well, not exactly sure how to answer the question, the pastor replied. He said, I am a pilgrim. A what? The young man asked. I thought they came over on the Mayflower. No, 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 I'm another kind of pilgrim, the pastor said. I'm trying to find my way from birth to life. Don't you mean birth to death? No. The pastor said, birth to life. My family of faith, we are indeed pilgrims. And we are searching for life among the weeds. Those weeds, they, they will try to choke the life out of us. <laughs> but God will not allow it. And someday we will have to answer the question, well, were you weeds or were you wheat? So let us all strengthen our commitment to God and to his church and maybe, just maybe, turn some of those weeds into wheat. Amen.